Hey y'all, Coach and Fight here, guys. Stay, see with me. Shalom, shalom. And in today's class, we're going to be talking about Trump's wall. What do you know about Trump's wall, Stay? There's a lot of controversy about it, about, you know, should we let, you know, the the people in? Should we not let the people out? Um, should we not let them in? Um, so I just never really followed that news story. Yeah, so they had a lot to do with uh, Mexicans versus Americans, where I guess the idea was that the Mexicans were coming over and taking the jobs from the Americans or something like that illegally. And can we, we call going, them? Can we call them Mexicans now, or is it the word that we should use Spanish? No, actually, I think in this case we're talking specifically about the country of Mexico. Okay. So you know, opposed to like a Puerto Rico or somewhere like that. So no. Okay, yeah. I just didn't want to, yeah. you know, disrespect the culture. Okay. But the idea was that if we created this wall, that we can stop them from coming over here. Okay. But in this class, we're going to be looking at this a little bit closer from a biblical, scriptural perspective because I believe that this wall could have actually had an opposite meaning. Mm -hmm. In other words, it wasn't to keep them out. It was to keep us from going there. Okay. Keep us out of Mexico. Okay. Now, I'm going to look at some scripture here. We're going to look at quite a few scripture. Um, so we'll do this class a little bit differently where we'll, you know, let you read and the scripture and then we'll just talk about it briefly. But I believe the scripture itself is going to speak um, and paint a picture that when you include this wall in it, makes you go, hmm. All right. I wonder. Interesting. Let's take a look. All right. This class is primarily going to be coming out of the Third Testament of the Bible. We're okay. going to be looking in the um, New Testament as well as the Old Testament at a few verses. But the meat of this is actually coming out of the Third Testament. All right. The first place we're going to look at is chapter two. But before I get into this, I want to say two things. First of all, you guys know I'm not really into politics. You know, Donald Trump is no different to me than Joe Biden or Obama or George Bush at this point. Okay. They're part of a system that I no longer consider myself included in. Mm -hmm. But still being in the world, I do pray for those individuals a lot, almost every day, and have even put out videos praying for both Biden and for Donald Trump. So the point is, is that this is not about politics mm -hmm. so much as it's about the ideal of this wall. Mm -hmm. And secondly, I want to say that this is a video you'll probably want to watch to the end because of the way we're going to do this. There's going to be at least one point that's going to pluck a nerve with, I will say, just about everybody in the world. I hope not. Well, it's just the way it is. You know, sometimes, you know, there's a bone in that you got to be careful. Mm -hmm. And in this case, if you hear this and you click off, it's not it's not going to serve you well. You may have a bad feeling about me as well as the third testament of the Bible. If you don't wait to the end, if you don't wait until the end of the teaching, um, you might not get the complete meaning of what you're trying to say. Well, that's with any video. That's with any video. But this one particularly, you may actually it may actually harm you. Right. It's I like, understand. yeah, you, you may actually take you in the wrong direction going, hey, I don't believe that. And hey, I don't believe him. And, you know, you didn't stick around to the end. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're over here in chapter two and we're going to start at verse 19. People of other lands shall come to this people. So we're talking about somebody traveling. Multitudes anxious to ask you of the spiritual happenings that you have witnessed in this era. So this video is about this wall. So now, but the question is, who's traveling where? Mm -hmm. The idea was that we're stopping the Mexicans from coming here. Mm -hmm. As well as of the revelations and prophecies that I have given you. So this verse is talking about a people who is traveling in order to hear these revelations or these prophecies. Right. Mm -hmm. Read verse 20. For in many parts of the world, my messages have been received that say, In a place in the West, my divine ray has descended to speak in this era to humanity. So it's talking about the West here. Mm -hmm. And we've covered in a few classes how the Garden of Eden was actually placed on the east 
of Eden, mm -hmm. right? That's over there in Africa and that part of the world would be the east of Eden. Mm -hmm. So if the garden is in the east, then where is Eden? If the garden is in the east, then Eden is in the west. So when he says the west, he very well could be talking about this part of the world. Right. Talking mm -hmm. about North America and South America. Right. Mm hmm it's saying that somewhere in this part of the world, his so-called divine ray would descend to speak to humanity. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to come back to that. If you would, go ahead. You shall see how, when the time comes, other people and nations shall come looking for you. So the scripture is talking about this transition again, and we're talking about this wall specifically. Right. And so the question is, who is traveling where? Mm -hmm. Who's coming to who? Right. All right, let's... And then men from the great religions shall be surprised that it is not them whom I came looking for. So what it's talking about here is how us, humanity, who are now receiving this so-called vibrating echo of the trumpet that, you know, is reverberating in the hearts of humanity, steering them towards the will of our Father as we prepare for these tribulous times. Mm -hmm. What it's talking about is how these revelations are coming from the West now. Right. And so the people in the East are a little bit surprised by this. Right. They're like, hey, we're in Jerusalem. Why aren't we getting these messages? Yeah. You have the different um, uh, religious leaders that are very prominent that people look up to. Um, and then you're wondering why is the, I'm going to say, humble and lowly person receiving these new messages and they are not. In, in these humble and lowly places too. Right. You know, mm -hmm. because, you know, even today there's a lot of people that won't receive anything, any messages unless they're coming out of Jerusalem. Right. You mm -hmm. know. But here he's talking about the West. Right. And when we come down to chapter 8 and look at verse 83, it gives us a hint on where he's actually talking about. Okay. If you would, go ahead. I have descended to the bosom of the people of Israel. He's talking about Israel. Establishing the greatest number of them in this nation. It says this nation, but look at what nation it mentions here. Mexico. Mexico, but notice the parentheses. Mm -hmm. When you come over to the original text, the book of True Life, and I remind you guys, you can find a link to all 12 of these volumes down in the description of this video. But when you come back and you look at lesson 269 and verse 2, you see that it doesn't actually say Mexico there. Mm. But the thing is, we understand that this document, this third testament of the Bible was generated in Mexico. Yeah. Right. So that's what they're talking about. That's why they took the liberties of adding that word, because this is where the Third Testament was actually started. OK. But I thought that was important to note. Yeah. The others disseminated to all the nations. But notice that they weren't the only ones. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Because this vibrating echo of the trumpet is being heard by everybody. Right. Of course, not everybody's listening to it. Not everybody will listen to it. Right. But it's going on throughout all of humanity. Mexico is important because of this document. Mm -hmm. That's what sets them apart. Mm -hmm. The others disseminated to all the nations sent by me. And with them, I have communicated spiritually. And this is important to understand is that he's communicating spiritually. Right. See, what you're hearing on this YouTube video is a materialistic communication. Right. This vibrating out, coming out of my mouth, you can hear that. And that's actually a physical thing. Yes. That's how they use their voice to break glasses. Mm -hmm. You know, that's material. But when he's talking about this vibrating echo of the trumpet that everybody is hearing all over the world, this is a spiritual communication. Yeah. And this is important to the understanding of why this particular people were chosen. These are my chosen ones. They who have kept faithful to me. So it's talking about this Mexican people right. where this document was created. Who have not contaminated their hearts. Now, this is important because that means they were a different kind of people. Right. You know, they, they, they was in a remote area where they didn't have a lot of the Babylonian things going on like the rest of us had. Yeah. And whose spirit can perceive my inspiration. So, for, with that meaning, they had a certain element of spiritualization already. Mm -hmm. So, they probably was already reading the scripture 
And when you put those two things together, a remote location with not a lot of distractions and a people who are collectively reading the scripture and practicing what it says, that creates uh, that creates a, uh, an environment conducive to actually getting these revelations and this third testament of the Bible. I agree. Yeah. Through their conduit. I am giving to the world a wealth of wisdom. A wealth of wisdom. This right here is the third testament of the Bible. Mm -hmm. That originated in Mexico. And like you were saying, um, when you put a person out in a remote area where they don't have a lot of the materialistic uh, materialism and you um, give them the word or even just nature, you know, to be able to. Um, hear nature you know you can hear the voice of the father yeah. so much it's like it's so much clear yeah so and this document was written in about 1866 to 1884 or something like that mm -hmm. so you can imagine you know they're already in a remote location in 1884 mm -hmm. right so and nature would have been a big part of their lives anyway right. but I think what's setting these people apart as well is the fact that they are spiritualizing themselves meaning they're keeping the covenant they're, they're obeying the law right mm -hmm. but like we said this book here is the third testament of the bible it is actually derived from a bigger collection of books called the book of true life which in my which i believe has over ten thousand pages wow. of documents here so like we saw back at the beginning this third testament is a compendium mm -hmm. so that's what he's talking about this wealth of information right. that was generated in mexico yeah mm -hmm. it's a collection of the different books that are included in the great book of life now you might be saying what's the significance of mexico yeah right i, I mean other than being remote but it, there's other remote locations everywhere yeah i mean i can you know take you for a two-minute walk mm -hmm. here off from where we're at right now and you'll be in one of the most remotest places you've ever been you may not even find your way back you know if i blindfolded you and walked your way in yeah so what's the significance of mexico mm -hmm. well i believe it has something to do with the second coming of the messiah Second coming of the Messiah, okay? Well, we read over in Acts chapter 1 that after the Messiah's death and after the Feast of Pentecost, the Messiah left and went up on the clouds. Mm -hmm. You remember that? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like Elijah where he was almost caught up on a um, chariot of fire. Right. Except this time, the big picture was is that he was going into the clouds. Yes. The thing is, he left Mount Olivet. Mm -hmm. You see, in verse 9, it's saying that he was taken up upon the clouds. Yes. And then down here in verse 12, you see that after he was taken up on the clouds, they left the Mount of Olivet. Right. Which means that they were on Mount Olivet when he left. Right. Uh-huh. And, you know, the story goes that he's going to come back just the way he left. Yes. That's what they were told. Mm-hmm. Well, when you compare that to what we read over in Zechariah chapter 14, we understand that that's not actually going to be a good day. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Because what we read here is that on the day that he returns, he sure he's coming out of the clouds, mm -hmm. just like he went right where he went to. Mm -hmm. And sure, he's going to land on Mount Olivet, mm -hmm. the exact place where he left. He's coming back to. But when you're reading Zechariah chapter 14 and verse four, you see that he's actually going to destroy that mountain. Okay. I believe this is that rock that Daniel was talking about that's going to destroy the economy. Well, this rock appears to land on Mount Olivet, hmm. and changing that mountain into a valley. Okay. It's going to split it. Half of it's going to go to north and half of it's going to go to the south, creating an earthquake even that's going to cause the people to flee to this place called Azel. And I try to find out where Azel is at, but I ain't been able to find it where that town or city or whatever that is mm -hmm. to see how far of a distance are we talking about? Is right. it miles or is it hundreds of miles or mm -hmm. thousands of miles? Mm -hmm. But the point of all of this is that when he returns on the day of the Lord, there's going to be this catastrophic destruction that goes on over there in about Jerusalem. Right. So if we pull up a map of the earth looking down from the pole where we can see all of the continents. Mm -hmm. And if we start in Jerusalem and put in some concentric circles showing the impact and the impact zones around it. All right. 
understanding that the third testament of the Bible says that on that day, three quarters of the earth will be destroyed. Mm -hmm. Well, a rock that hits Mount Olivet, destroying three quarters of the earth, projecting radially will look something like this. Oh, wow. Where you have Africa destroyed, yes. Europe destroyed, Asia destroyed. Most of the countries are destroyed. Most of the continents are destroyed with the exception of Australia and South America. And looks, North America. Looks yeah. like even portions of North America will be harmed. Oh, okay. Could be. Right. I, of course, you know, we don't have this map exactly right. Uh -huh. But you can see that it could actually creep down into North America. Right. Uh-huh. Okay, so... We understand that when the Messiah comes back, that when he land upon Mount Olivet, that a lot of these places, the continents, will be destroyed. Yep. Okay, so how is this a connection to the wall? Well, let's continue to study. We got a lot more verses to cover. So let's come over and let's look at chapter 56 and verse 35. Okay. Again... Just as in past times when our missionaries advanced from east to west, spreading the knowledge of my word, in this time, my envoys will return to this world, taking the light of this message to people at home. So what he's talking about is in time past where mm -hmm. he had this special group of people who had the charge of carrying his word throughout scripture. Right. They did a good job, of course, until they met Constantine. Mm -hmm. They basically stripped them of, you know, their scripture and their calendar and everything else. Mm -hmm. Well, there was a gap there between that period and 1886 or 1884 when this third testament taken place. But it's saying it's the same way mm -hmm. where he's now entrusted a certain people in order to carry this message. Mm -hmm. Well, it just so happened now that it's the Mexican people. Okay. And not all of the Mexican people, of course, is this certain group the where this Third Testament came from. Okay. If you will, read 36. Will it seem strange to men that this time my light moves from west to east? So this wall could very well be somebody's way of cutting us off from this people. But let but, but hold on, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here. Mm -hmm. And like I said, you guys don't click off this video. This mm -hmm. is what I was talking about. Now will be the time that you know you know it's gonna steer you wrong if mm -hmm. you if you click off right here. We ain't even halfway through yet. Mm -hmm. But the point of what he's saying here is how this message now is not coming from the east or Jerusalem to the rest of the world. It's originating from the west. Mm -hmm. And we see that. Mm -hmm. We see this pattern developing by way of the scripture. Mm -hmm. So let's come over here to chapter 63 and let's start right here in verse 5. Okay. Woe to those who in this time do not struggle to light their lamps for they shall be lost. Talking about not only that vibrating echo of the trumpet, mm -hmm. but it's also kind of referring to that parable of the wise virgins right because that's basically what the trumpet is doing is trying to ignite this fire within us right right mm -hmm. of course it'll be those wise virgins that have this so-called oil that is why this being the time of light there are shadows everywhere and we're talking about spiritual shadows yes right you know <clears throat> You know from my own words that I chose this nation in which to manifest myself in my third coming. This in, and again, we're talking about Mexico. Uh -huh. we, we've we established that. That's where he manifested his. Th that's where he manifested his third coming. Right. You know what that means. The third coming, because the first coming was with Moses. Right. Second coming was with the Messiah. Yes. And this is, would be the third coming. That's why they refer to as the third Elijah. Mm -hmm. And when he said that he manifest himself in his third coming, the scripture, this third testament of the Bible, is the manifestation of the third coming. Yes. This mm -hmm. is this vibrating echo that people are hearing. Mm -hmm. But of course... The majority of humanity is not going to get it. Mm -mm. I could take this scripture and roll it up and beat them with it. And they're still not going to understand what it says. Mm -hmm. Right. They're, they're going to have to have this day of the Lord event. Yeah. That's actually going to shake the earth before they actually wake up. Yeah. That's usually how it happens. Right. But the point is, is that this this third testament is the second coming mm -hmm. and it's originating in Mexico. I chose this nation in which to manifest myself in my third coming. But the reason is unknown to you. Unknown. It has been a mystery to you. 
However, the master who does not wish to have secrets from his disciples come to reveal to you that all that you must know so that you may answer correctly those who might ask. Yeah, why did this book come from Mexico? Right. That was the first question I asked. When yeah, I yeah, yeah, you know, because, and that's not to say that it shouldn't, but Mexico? you would think a more advanced yeah, I'm thinking back, think backwards. Measure. You know, yeah. that's what that's what usually how we think. You know, it would come from a more, you know, educated, educated a yeah. more, you know, what we would call a more uh, in, intellectual. Uh, and and this is what he was saying earlier: how those who are in these elevated positions, the Pope is somewhere sitting, wondering why he's not getting these revelations. Yeah, and and let me let me clarify this to not say that the people of Mexico are unintelligent and. And I'm saying that you would think it would be a more elevated. Yeah. You would be a, a more elevated people like the Pope. Yeah. Who, you know, uh, different uh, priests and all those big, yeah. big folks. Yeah. You know, big. that's who you would think would get it. But as with the Messiah, as with the Father, as he always does, he come to the humble people. Yeah, and, that's important you know, to understand. That's, yeah. that's, a, that's the... That's, why he, I believe one of the reasons he chose Mexico. Well, keep going and maybe we can turn your belief into a conviction. Okay, number seven. Mm -hmm. I have seen that the dwellers of this corner of the earth have always loved me and sought me out. So this is a diff So this already speaks of humility when they're seeking out the Father. Mm -hmm. There it takes a certain kind of haughty person that says he don't need right our father mm -hmm. and you know a lot of us you know have been in that position a lot of us still are mm -hmm. where we're sure we may pray every once in a while but it's just to say thank you for that loan that was accepted or mm -hmm. that new house that we got or you know things that babylon is providing us with when i first started you know this journey not too many years ago one of my first revelations is that we're giving the father credit for satan's stuff and we're giving satan credit for our father's stuff mm -hmm. right so we're a little bit backwards mm -hmm. And even when their worship has not been always perfect, I have received their intentions and their love like a flower of innocence, sacrifice, and suffering. This is referring to the law here and how it takes a little bit of um, work, I want to say, to get an understanding of the statutes particularly. Mm. You know, we've been doing the statutes, um, talking about the feast days for almost 20 years now. Mm -hmm. And it seems as though here in the last few years is what we're actually starting to get stuff right. Yeah. And I consider myself educated. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm one of these people who, you know, has, you know, read all of the scripture, but yet I was doing stuff wrong. You can imagine these other people who are in this secluded area. They don't have a lot of other, they don't even, didn't even have the internet to go by. So they would have gotten stuff wrong too. Mm -hmm. But he says he recognized their intentions. Right. And this is important because, you know, we're in these 10 days of all now. And so our father is seeing our intentions, even though many of us are still getting this stuff wrong. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, that's one hint as to why he chose that particular people. Right. I mean, of course, we made up our own hint, but, you know, the scripture is better. Mm -hmm. Here's another one. If we come over to chapter 63 and verse 12. Do not think that I chose this nation for my new manifestation at the last hour. Like he was just thinking of them and say, hey, I might as well do it over there. Yeah. All had been foreseen throughout eternity. He always knew that this was going to happen. Right. This soul, this race, your spirits have been prepared by me just as the time of my presence was marked by my will. So this is letting us know that these people were chosen from, from the beginning. They were absolutely chosen from the beginning. I believe these are a very special people when you consider the story of Noah mm -hmm. and how you had these three individuals that got off this ship. Right. This ark. Mm -hmm. I remember reading a story that said that one of the people groups that got off of that boat continued east. Okay. And it appears as though those people somehow made it across this connection between Russia and Africa to end up in what we know now as Alaska. Mm -hmm. I believe these people continue to travel. This original people continue to travel all the way till they reached Mexico. Mm -hmm. And that's the same people. Possibly. You know, the same way you had 
Abraham's descendant carrying the word of the scripture back there in the old time. Mm -hmm. And that would be what they call the beginning. Mm -hmm. But then you have a relative of Abraham who has made his way east all the way until he crossed over into what we know as North America and now is in Mexico. Okay. So I believe there's something special about these people mm -hmm. and even this soil. Like we talked about earlier. Yeah, the nation. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go on to 13. I chose to begin my manifestations among the most humble. Like you said, the humble. Among those who maintain their understanding and their spirits pure. Reading the scripture and actually doing what it says. Later, I allowed everyone to come to me. Now, this is talking about us. Mm -hmm. We're actually over here in America getting this third testament. Because at my table, it does not exist any distinctions nor preferences then you know and that's what a lot of people get caught up on that's why I'm afraid some people would have clicked off of this video because you know they got a little bit of racism in their heart mm -hmm. but we have to understand that, that our father has no distinctions or preferences mm -mm, he doesn't yeah, he doesn't really see color and stuff like that mm -mm. My word poured out upon this people has been simple and humble. And this is why it's important to be humble is because his word is humble. Right. How are we going to be haughty carrying a humble word? I right. don't really, we, we're going to mm -hmm. try to change it, right? It doesn't mix. Go ahead. Within your reach and your senses, full of clarity and has been profound for your spirit, because I, even though I am the arcane, always manifest myself and express myself with simplicity and clarity. Simplicity and clarity. So when we have this individual full of all of this pomp and grandeur behind the pulpit trying to deliver this humble message, it gets a little bit confused. Yeah, it's like mixing oil and water. Absolutely, mm -hmm. like mixing iron and clay. Mm -hmm. I am a secret to no one. Secret and mystery are children of your ignorance. So here's a big key to why he chose these people was because they were humble. Like we said, they were keeping and they, they were doing what the scripture says. Mm -hmm. That combination is powerful, especially in these times. Mm -hmm. And then considering the position of where they were at, then it kind of makes sense why this all started there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. But that doesn't really get into the question of the wall yet. Yeah, I'm wondering about this wall. All right. Let's come over to chapter 56. And if you would, read verse one. My law will be the ark of salvation in this period. Now, that needs to be repeated several times, even write this on our walls. That there's a lot of people wondering how it is that we're supposed to survive this tribulation, at least those who know about it. Mm -hmm. Know the about these events that's coming on that threaten to annihilate humanity, mm -hmm. but realizing that some parts of humanity will survive, mm -hmm. it is this ark that he's talking about that's actually going to carry people across these floodwaters, just like Noah to safety, right. and what we need to understand is that this ark is the law yes and and by law very very specific here when he says the law because he's not talking about every rule of the bible right or every rule of the old testament mm -hmm. he's talking specifically about exodus chapter 20 through 24 verse 7 mm -hmm. yeah those are the instructions for surviving these events that are threatening us right now okay when the flood waters of sin see the sin is what the transgression of the law transgression of those rules that mm -hmm. we, like we said are exodus chapter 20 through 24 verse 7 of grief and misery are unleashed this is the apocalypse truly i say to you that men of other nations will arrive in caravans to this country to this country mm. it's saying that these people are going to be coming in caravans to this country. And what country is he talking about? Mexico. He's talking about Mexico. Mm -hmm. People are going, especially when they're reading this. How many people have read or how many people have heard this in this video and immediately turned their heads going, how are we going to get to Mexico? Yeah, you know, it just makes me think of how when we first uh, were the father bought the third testament to us we was wondering how are we going to get this book? Yeah, you know, how? We yeah. can't go to no Mexico. Yeah, because right. Because there were so few 
and in nobody America. knew about it. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it seemed like them over there had abundant yeah. copies. We heard story after story right. of how they had boxes of these books, mm -hmm. you know, because they you was a huge congregation of people studying it. Right. Mm -hmm. But praise the Lord, there are ways that we can get the Third Testament, including Amazon and you know Barnes and Noble Books dot com, whatever we can get the mm -hmm. Third Testament, and there's even a link in the description where they can order a hard copy. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's only one place to get a hard copy, and that's from GetThirdTestament.com. Right. Mm -hmm. With our brother Israel over there. Yes. Mm -hmm. We understand he's doing a good job with his ministry. Right. So you guys consider ordering one of his hard copies, which I must say is better than what you're going to get from Walmart. Yeah, and another plus for the hard copy is that you will have it in your library uh, of books to study. And, you know, I myself have a soft copy of the Third yeah, Testament. Yeah, you got the Walmart copy. Yeah, uh -huh. and, you know, it is definitely, you know, kind of raggedy. Yeah, a little it don't take long. Tacky, yeah. But, yeah, a hard copy would be nice. It's actually essential in a library like mine. But anyway, back over here talking about these caravans. Mm -hmm. The scripture is saying that people from around the world so some of these people got this message about Mount Olivet. They're over there in Jerusalem like, oh, maybe we ought to let them throw us out of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And so now they're thinking about where they're going to go. Some of these people are actually going to consider Mexico. Because of this third testament. Because of this third testament of the Bible. And now we're actually erecting a wall. Mm. Could this wall be stopping, attempt to stop people from going down there? Mm. I mean, think about it. how many people have been confused about this wall, wondering why did we even need this wall? Yeah. You know, we appreciate what they are doing when they come over here to pick these peas and stuff. Well, I don't want to do that kind of stuff. Yeah, it makes you think one of the reasons we were told was to keep the, the quote, bad people out. But... There's other ways to keep the bad people out. Why do you have to construct a million billions of dollars on a wall? Yeah, it never really made any sense to anybody except, you know, the, the people in charge of building the wall. Of course, it made sense to them. You know, that's mm -hmm. a lot of money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but to the rest of us, we're going, huh? Why do we need this wall? Right. Well, maybe it's because of these caravans. Hmm. Truly, I say to you that men of other nations will arrive in caravans to this country Attracted by its spirituality. Spirituality. Its hospitality. Hospitality. And peace. Peace. And when they know about this revelation. Talking about the Third Testament. And have faith in what I said in my new coming as the Holy Spirit. That's talking about John. The book of John when he said that we will all have to worship in spirit. spirit mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. in truth. Mm -hmm. I will also name them Israelites in the spirit. Israelites in the spirit. Wow. Right? Mm -hmm. And so... Who doesn't want to be called Israelite in the spirit? Right. So do we need to be putting together this caravan? Mm. Well, like I said, hold up, guys. Don't click off the videos because <laughs> you're going to get messed up. You right. know, was video, you know, somebody that clicked off the video looking for a, you know, ticket to Mexico. <laughs> Slow down. <laughs> let's, let's make I told you to wait. Mm -hmm. But before we jump over there, let's continue on to the end. Let's look at verse two for now, though. Among those multitudes will be my emissaries. Emissaries. These are talking about the envoys. These are people people we call like the elect or the chosen or the bride, 144,000. Mm -hmm. Whom I will send to their people to convey the divine message of my word to their brethren. So these emissaries will also be summoned from around the world in their scattered locations, mm -hmm. summoned to Mexico. Right. That's what it says. Mm-hmm. To convey the divine messages, meaning the that what that what they have to add that they gain spiritually. Mm -hmm. Somebody's read this and then they got some other understandings. We all we do that all the time. That's right. called intuition. Mm -hmm. But not everyone will come to this nation. Whoa, not everybody. Wait. To learn of this teaching which I brought to you, because many will receive it spiritually. Spiritually. Wow. So whereas some are like, hey, this you got this church over here, I'm a, for lack of a better word, this congregation of people mm -hmm. who where the Third Testament originated from. Mm -hmm. I imagine they're still over there. From what I understand, they're still over there. This congregation is still going. Mm -hmm. And if any of you guys are hearing us, send us a what's up or whatever. And, yeah. you know, let us know if you guys are actually still doing this or not. So not everybody is going to go over there. Right. And I know I'm being a little bit silly here, 
Because I don't even believe man could contemplate the idea of building a wall to stop our father from doing anything. No, That's like ridiculous. So <laughs> I mean, maybe back in the during the Tower of Babel days with Nimrod, but you know, we realize now he's he not gonna build no wall mm -mm. to stop our father from doing nothing. No. But I really wanted to bring people's attention to, you know, what we're discussing here. Yeah. Because, mm -hmm. you know, it's still this wall is here. Yeah. There's somebody that's going to be headed to Mexico mm -hmm. and run into this wall and they'll have to find a way up or around it or under it or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, not everybody is going to go. Yeah. I think one of the um, the points that we need to make is that not everybody has to go not everybody has to go we're going to see that here you know probably the only people that are going are the ones who clicked off this video already <laughs> they're on their way already <laughs> they clicked the video too soon and now they pack in their bags mm -hmm. it may be only their spiritual bags that they need to pack right mm -hmm. matter of fact let's come over here to chapter 63 okay and let's look at verse 100 okay you will see your brothers come from far away lands and nations in search of their spiritual freedom. So he's talking to these people over there in Mexico. Right. Get ready. Mm -hmm. These people are coming. Mm -hmm. As when the tribes of Israel cross the desert, they will also come in multitudes from the ancient Palestine. Yep. And we understand that this event is going to be similar to the days of Moses in that particular exodus. Mm hmm. Their journey has been long and painful since the time they rejected the Messiah who had come to offer them his kingdom as a new heritage. See, this is talking about the church age. Yeah. You have to remember that the church age was created there with Constantine mm -hmm. and this period has gone on for this number of thousands of years. Right. It's coming to an end, of course, mm -hmm. but that's what it's talking about, this painful journey. Mm -hmm. We know that as Jacob's trouble. Right. But they are approaching the oasis where they will rest and meditate on my word. The oasis of both the materialistic Mexico, mm -hmm. because they're going to this remote location, mm -hmm. if it is still remote. Mm -hmm. But you also have this spiritual place that they're also coming to. Mm -hmm. Both yeah. of which is going to, you know, provide them with this so-called rest and peace. Mm -hmm. But they are approaching the oasis where they will rest and meditate on my word. So that after they are strengthened by having recognized my law. My law. Everybody needs to recognize this law. Mm -hmm. the, the, yeah, we, we, that's, a, that's a major. Like we talked about the church age. Mm -hmm. Well, the church in the church age, cr people created their own definitions of words. Mm -hmm. And the law is one of them. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people are confused when you say the law. Right. They're thinking that they're talking about all of the rules of the Bible. Or even the 613 rules that are found in the Bible. Mm -hmm. They might follow the long forgotten path designated for their evolution evolution and by evolution it's talking about spiritual evolution right right mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. that's how humans are evolving mm -hmm. spiritually then you will hear that many will say that your nation is the new promised land in the new promised land you even heard me say that yeah. Right. I might even said it in this video based on, you know, what we was talking about my Olivet over there. Mm -hmm. You know, that's big. That part of the world is about to get harmed. Mm -hmm. So when you think about the promises given to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, you know, the promised land has to be in the West somewhere. Mm -hmm. The New Jerusalem. But you will tell them that they will find the promised land beyond this world. Beyond this world. So as these people arrive in these caravans, right. this is the message they should be receiving. Mm -hmm. This ain't heaven, guys. Right, right, right. You know, this is this is not our world. Mm -hmm. We learn over in the Shepherd of Hermas. And that in order to reach it, one must do so in spirit after crossing the great desert of trials of this time. So hold on, you guys, while you're headed to Mexico, getting ready to climb over this wall or whatever to get down there. After you've made this journey, guess what? Now the journey is going to start mm -hmm. and you're going to realize that you never had to make that physical journey in the first place. You could have stayed where you was at right. mm -hmm. and started the journey. In fact, that's what you should have did because you wasted a lot of resources getting across this wall. Mm -hmm. Also, you will tell them that this nation is no more than an oasis in the middle of the desert. An oasis in the middle of the desert. And this is kind of alluding to that parable that's in the book. I don't know if you guys have heard about the parables too much, but where Elijah is leading the people through the desert to the promised land mm -hmm. and they came across the oasis. Mm -hmm. And you remember the so-called bad guy in the story, how he turned that oasis into a place of his business yeah, or revenue. Making. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what it's saying here is that we're not supposed to turn this Mexican neighborhood 
that mm -hmm. all of these people are going to show up to into some kind of a commercial churchy kind of event like you know like we do yeah that, that's, that, that's what we do that's what we do we you got, know we got to make money off it some kind of some way. kind of way <laughs> and so what we learned in that parable is that that's not you know how we're supposed to go about this and it's comparing it to this real life place of mexico as this particular you know oasis mm -hmm. but you must understand my people that the oasis must give shade to the weary travelers in addition to offering its pure and fresh water to the lips of those who thirst and seek shelter. You guys, you know, go over and check out that parable that we're yeah. talking about. Yeah, yeah, and this all makes sense right here. Right. You know, mm -hmm. it's all about that, you know, that water. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, when it's talking about this oasis, you know, and this water, it's referring back to what we hear about in the Bible when it talks about the springs of living water, mm -hmm. you know, that the Messiah were provided at the end times. Mm -hmm. Well, the springs of living water originates from Mexico now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is the shade and water of which I speak? It is my doctrine. It is the doctrine. Right. right? So this is all spiritual now. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's referring back to the scripture mm -hmm. and, you know, we have to mention that you have this third testament that we're referring to. Right. But there actually are three parts to it and you have to have all three parts to understand his doctrine. Mm -hmm. You know, the father's word is not redundant. It's not repetitive. Mm -hmm. You don't see anything that you learned in the Old Testament repeated in the New Testament. Right. That's why there's so many people highly confused right now mm -hmm. because the father keep, didn't keep telling them the same message. Mm -hmm. And so they're thinking that because the message is not repeated, then the message is gone away. Right. No, the scripture is not it's not repetitive like that what we learned in the old testament is not taught in the new testament but you have to have the old testament in order to understand the new testament right and you have to have the new testament in order to understand the old testament mm -hmm. well you have to have the third testament to understand both that's what i was going to say both of them right? right and that's the and that's the key here is it's like that that movie where they're looking for the different parts to this amulet and when they get all three of them together it creates this thing mm -hmm. well that's what we have have here mm -hmm. the old testament the new testament and the third testament are the three parts to his doctrine that is now going to help move us to this new state of being that you know we hear about you know like evolved spiritually this evolved spiritually mm -hmm. preparing us for what we recognize as the millennial age right there will be a different kind of people over there mm -hmm. you know but anyway in whom have I deposited this abundance of grace and blessings? So who is this people that are getting this? In you, O oh people, so that you may eliminate all selfishness from your hearts and show it like a clean mirror in every one of your works. See, selfishness will, will be a um, huge deterrent for those who want to otherwise see the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. Right? Then that's why, you know, um, the adversary... Um, has us all into coveting, you mm -hmm. know, and so because we're so, you know, covetous, it's hard for us to then share what we have, you know, and we get a little bit stingy. That's all by design. Yeah. We have, yeah, we have to be um, this unselfish people here. Yeah, and I think, it, you know, he's telling these people that don't be selfish with the words, mm -hmm. with the teachings, with mm -hmm. the doctrines that I have given you. Okay. That you're, you're supposed to share it to those okay. people. Okay. All right. All right. Good. 105. Would not your spirits and your hearts be filled with joy if, through your love, those people who are spiritually unenlightened and attached to their traditions are able to be converted to the Marian Trinitarian Spiritualist Doctrine? Now, this is big. You know, we did a whole class on this Marian Trinitarian Spiritualist Doctrine, mm -hmm. you know, because the way it's written here and maybe it's translation error, it almost sounds like a new religion. Yeah, it does. What it, what it boils down to is what we were hearing about this new Jerusalem mm -hmm. and what we were referring to earlier about how this people is going to be different. Right. Well, this right here summarizes the difference in this new people mm -hmm. where it says the Marian Trinitarian Spiritualist doctrine right okay so and we can break this down you know we, like i said we covered it in a video but when it's talking about the trinitarian part mm -hmm. that's what we were referring to when we were talking about the three parts of the bible that's mm -hmm. that's the trinity the old testament the new testament and the third testament not the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Right. That's that's kind of like what we were saying. The church age. They mm -hmm. they redefine everything. Yeah. You know. But then you have the spiritualist part, and we refer to that, mm -hmm. where humanity is changing from being materialistic 
to really come in contact with our spirit. Right. And that's going to be part of that change that we go through. Mm -hmm. But this other word here is kind of new. Marian. The Marian, mm -hmm. right? Because we have always heard about, like you say, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Right. But through the church age, we have only learned to pay attention to the Son. The Messiah. That's all, what it's all about. Mm -hmm. It's like the whole religion is about the Messiah, mm -hmm. right? If you go to church, it's all you hear about. You go to the, you know, all you hear about is the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Even when you try to start talking about things of the other Elohim, which would include the Father, the default is, is all I need is Jesus. Right. Well, that's what the Marian part is, is that we're recognizing all three parts to this. Mm -hmm. We're not just recognizing the Messiah and saying all I need is Jesus. Mm -hmm. No, we need the Father too. Mm -hmm. And I'm not trying to get into any, you know, discussion of whether they're three and one or one and three. You know, mm -hmm. that's not what we're talking about here. The the son is the word of God. Mm -hmm. So we have to recognize the word of God. Mm -hmm. Our father is the creator. So we have to love and recognize our creator. Mm -hmm. So we have them separate, our creator and the word. Mm -hmm. Some would argue that the word created us, but that's a little bit more advanced discussion we'll save for later. Mm -hmm. But then we have this third part. This Holy Spirit part, mm -hmm. we have to recognize the three, right? Right, mm -hmm. and that's what's going to make these people different. Yeah, they ain't just saying all I need is Jesus. Right, you know, all I need is the Bible. Mm -hmm. No, they need, and we need all three mm -hmm. in order for our survival. Mm -hmm. You know that. Go ahead. I was just going to say, and we're saying that the Holy Spirit is recognized in this word we are using called Mary. Mary, because mm -hmm. we understand just like the Messiah was. The incarnated spirit of the word. Mm -hmm. Mary was the incarnation of the Holy Spirit. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Wisdom. Mm -hmm. Wisdom. Mm -hmm. Right. And you learn that in uh, the book of Proverbs. I think it's chapter one or chapter two. Right. Refers to wisdom as a she. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I don't think that's pertinent to the conversation. But I think it softens it for some people. Yeah. You know, it's like you say, this is outside of this discussion that we're in. But, you know, just for something for them to ponder about, you know, we're talking about the Holy Spirit. We're talking about nature. We're talking about how the Father, you know, as I was learning today, uses the word land as a she. So, you know, it, it all goes together. Yeah. So, and what it's talking about here is how these people are spiritually enlightened. Now, you have to understand how it is to become spiritually enlightened. Mm -hmm. And that's, a lot, that's what we teach on this channel. Yeah. You know, we teach about the, the law. Mm -hmm. We teach about the covenant. Mm -hmm. we, you know, we teach about the feast days. It's right. necessary to keep the feast days to be spiritually enlightened. The Sabbath day, we teach about that, even tell people when it is. Mm -hmm. And we go on to teach about Hermes, mm -hmm. you know, and the powers and all of that. So, you know, this, this is a big deal for our channel here. But what it's saying is once these people are spiritually enlightened, then and only then will they be able to be converted over to this people here. Right. Mm -hmm. But anyway, let's go on. We're spending too much time on that. Would there not be joy among you if the people of old Israel were shown the true path of the people of new Israel? Talking about this west to the east thing. Yeah. While they're over there still, you know, into, you know, all of the things that took for our father to say, you know, how about y'all just stop doing feast days? Mm -hmm. Remember that? Mm -hmm. He said he don't even want us to keep new moon days or Sabbath days or anything. Well, that's because they were just flat out messing them up. Mm -hmm. Well, how about you got these new people understanding this going back and teaching them and say hey you know you guys are making errors yeah you know mm -hmm. it's not all about this pomp and grandeur and all mm -hmm. of this it's about the spiritual side of this not so much the material side that is to say that the first would attain grace through the last and you see that's the biggest problem with the so-called yeah. jewish community is their materialism mm -hmm. even churchianity mm -hmm. is full of materialism right mm-hmm and so it's saying that this new people is going to teach them spiritualism right mm-hmm up until now, nothing has convinced the Jewish people that it should break ancient traditions in order to reach its moral and spiritual evolution. See, and this is the problem, like we were referring to the father, you know, in one verse said to stop doing these feast days. It's because they turned it into tradition. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't about the spiritual side as much as it was about the rites and the ritual aspects of it. These are the people who believe that they are following the laws of Jehovah and of Moses but who in reality still continue to worship the golden calf. Still worship the golden calf. You know what that means? That means money. That's the Egyptian culture. Mm -hmm. You remember they, they served the golden calf in Egypt. Mm -hmm. As soon as they got out of Egypt, the first thing they wanted to do was go back to the golden calf of Egypt. Yeah. 
Well, one could argue that that was the same thing that we did mm -hmm. when we experienced something like a modern day exodus from Egypt. Yeah. When the money started getting low, we started looking back and wondering if we had made the right decisions or not. Yeah. Should we get jobs? Should yeah. That's this? the golden yeah. calf. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. the golden calf. And that's what it means by in reality, they continue to serve the golden calf through this modern day economy. Mm -hmm. You know, like we started off this video, that is a different system. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, that still worships the golden calf. That's why they got a big one down there in New York City. Right near the stock market. I think right outside the doors. Yep. The time is near for those wandering people scattered throughout the world to cease to look toward earth and to elevate their eyes toward heaven in search of the one who from the beginning was promised as their savior, but whom they rejected and killed because they thought he was poor and that he had nothing. So this is what was wrapping it up here. Yeah. You know, it could be somebody's got the bright idea to build a wall to stop this so-called caravan of people that's headed to Mexico. But, you know, we realize, you know, you know, nobody really needs to go to Mexico. Mm -mm. You know, it is this caravan to our savior that everybody is really headed to. Mm -hmm. You know, a whole lot of people have been on this journey, including ourselves, for several years. Yeah. And it's only today that we're realizing that he's even talking about going to Mexico. Mm -hmm. Nobody's even thought of this idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As of this morning, you know, I had no idea of thinking about Mexico. Right. You know, and, you know, it's only, you know, these verses that make us think about it. Yeah. I would say to get instead of getting on the caravan to go to this other nation to just get on the caravan and start picking up the third testament and start following the laws the, laws. the father mm -hmm. and you know as Herman say live unto live unto him mm -hmm. and you know that once you start following those laws as we are we can testify you know from ourselves that everything changes yeah. you, you know you those start covenants. to become you awaken those covenants will awaken you right you have and you have to remember we have three covenants that we're talking about mm -hmm. the covenant of the old testament was with moses and he you know received that covenant at mount horeb mm -hmm. it include the ten commandments in exodus chapter 20 it talks about the judgments in exodus 21 and 22 and then you read about the statutes in chapter 23 along with that covenant angel that's supposed to help us through this time. Mm -hmm. That same angel you read about in Malachi in chapter 4. This is all part of our father's plan um, through these end times. But then you also have an additional covenant in what we call the New Testament. Right. That's kind of where it gets its name from, the New Testament, meaning mm -hmm. New Covenant. Right. This covenant was ushered in by the Messiah, and it included baptism. Mm -hmm. and Passover, right? right? A lot of people don't really realize this, but he told us in the scripture that that's, that's the keys to his covenant is that communion festival that we have every year. Mm -hmm. What it boils down to is that we get baptized once in order to cleanse our spirit, mm -hmm. wiping away the sins and everything we have done, you know, even in our previous lifetimes. Mm -hmm. But then because we are sinful people, we the Father has given us Passover every year. That communion festival, that wine is similar to his blood mm -hmm. that now purifies our spirit every year. Right. That's the second covenant. And then that third covenant we read about over in Jeremiah chapter 31 and Hebrews chapter 12. This is this new Jerusalem, this spiritual Trinitarian Marian doctrine that we hear about. Mm -hmm. That's all part of this so-called third covenant. Okay. Right? So we're putting the three together. Yeah. And so that's where we need to be making this trek towards. Yeah. You know? There's, that's where the journey lies mm -hmm. in learning and learning to live within in the law mm -hmm. you know that's not something you do real easy or real quick yeah, right it, it is time. yeah and it is a journey so instead of us making these caravans to mexico only for them to tell us that mm -hmm. and probably send us back home <laughs> <laughs> we we just need to realize that this that the way goes through these covenants yeah you know yeah. that that's what they're there for yeah that's the true road that's right the true path Right. Mm -hmm. So as far as Trump's wall, what do you think? You think he was trying to build that wall to stop us from going to Mexico? I think it's a possibility. But, you know, if you're trying to stop the father, everything's going to fail. Yeah. It's not going to happen. So it doesn't matter anyway. It doesn't matter. And if he wants to build a wall, he can build a wall. He wants to tear it down. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But right, it's still going to happen. So with that, we're going to go ahead and close this video out. If you got anything out of it, hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. But leave us a comment either way. Mm-hmm. And... With that, we'll say shalom. Shalom.